Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca from DevourDinner.com. Welcome to my studio today and happy Sunday. I'm excited to be here, are you? We're going to do another fantastic Instant Pot live recipe demo Q&A. This is an opportunity for you to ask your questions and for me to answer them in real time, which is a lot of fun. And if you happen to be watching this on the replay, go ahead and add your questions into the comments because I will circle back around and I will answer them again later and later and later. So keep those questions coming. We are live today both on Facebook and on YouTube. And as always, as we get started, let's make sure our technology is working perfectly before we dive into this recipe. So if you're joining in, will you please say hello? Please let me know where you're from. And most importantly, will you let me know if you can hear me? Because that is very, very important. We're going to make sure that we're live over on YouTube as well. Yep, we sure are. We sure are. Hi, Trelva. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. All right. I'm going to put a link over in the description of the recipe that we are working on today. Oh, there's some people. Hi, Melina. Hi, Irene. Hi, Kathy, Pam. Welcome. Welcome. Irene says, yes, I can hear you. Melina, aloha. Good to see you. It's wonderful to see each of you as well. It's fun to be here. Um, we're starting off. I've got the pressure cooker on saute. So it is starting to heat up that bottom element and we're waiting for the front panel right here to read hot. Once it reads hot, we are going to either add a little bit of butter or a little bit of olive oil so that we can saute up our chicken. Now I've already gone ahead and I have kind of cubed up a couple of chicken breasts. Now these chicken breasts are large. Not all chicken breasts are created equal, as you guys know. So I have used probably about pound and a half, two pounds of chicken breast, and I have diced those up. Um, use the amount of chicken breast that works for your family. Maybe that's three chicken breasts, maybe that's four. Hi, Amy, how are you? Good afternoon from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners family. Um, she says it's sunny in Southwest Florida. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Chris, how are you? So good to be here. All right, it is reading hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of butter to the bottom because that's what I like to use. And you'll notice that that is just going to melt. I'm gonna turn my top down on so you can watch what's going on. This butter will brown really quickly if we don't watch it. I just wanna get that melted. And then I'm going to add my cube chicken. So this is in nice bite-sized little pieces. Now the fun thing with chicken and with any meat, when you put it in the instant pot, after that bottom element is hot, it will stick. Just let it stick for a minute. Remember, we've already put that butter down, it has melted. So that cold chicken is going to instantly adhere to the hot pan. But once it gets cooked a little bit, it will lift up and it won't leave anything left behind because we don't wanna have a burn notice. So we don't want little bits of chicken left behind. And if we try to scrape the chicken up too soon, oftentimes it will leave little bits behind and we don't want that. So just be patient let it do its thing and I promise this will all lift up and you're going to watch right here on the overhead. Um, Kathy, you're asking a great question. Okay, first of all, how many of you are cooking along with me? Because I want to know. How many of you are cooking along with me? I know so many of you do. It's so fun to kind of get to know who's doing it, and then some of you aren't even able to comment because you're on your phone and you're cooking and all of the things, and I get that too. Um, Kathy's question is, if I don't have the rice wine, can I use rice vinegar? Yes, use the rice vinegar. You can use mirin if you want to use mirin as well. That works. Hi, Phyllis, how are you? Hi, Sigrid. So fun today. So fun. Again, we are live on both Facebook and on 
um, YouTube. If you're watching in either location, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have shared this video, big hugs from me to you. It helps me so much. Um, when I was live two weeks ago, um, I was hoping for a record number of shares and we got quite a bit of shares. So I would love to see a bunch of shares on this video as well. But let's see those hearts flying across the screen. So are you noticing that I'm moving this chicken around, right? This side over here, the chicken is lifted, but this side over here, it's still thinking about it. And I'm just letting it do its thing. This recipe is super easy to do. Um, if you want to serve this with rice, I suggest you get rice going in a rice cooker um, prior to starting this recipe. So those of you who are working on this at home, pause, go get rice going so that you'll have rice ready to go at the end when all of this is ready. The purpose of sauteing our chicken is if I was to put the chicken in the instant pot as a whole, it would clump together. Okay, it would clump. And the chicken in the middle would never get cooked in a short amount of time. The reason the chicken will get all cooked in a short amount of time is because it's in little pieces and we've taken a moment to saute it. All right, now that we have all of our chicken lifted up, we see that most of the pink is gone. You see that? We can still see pink in some locations, but none of this chicken is stuck to each other. It's all separate. And that's what we want because we're only gonna cook this recipe under pressure for five minutes. And of course, we wanna make sure that our chicken is fully cooked and brought up to um, the 165 temperature that we need it to be. So we've got the outsides just a little bit cooked and we're gonna call it good right there. Now I have added some garlic and some salt and pepper to taste. Obviously, I'm not gonna taste it right now, um, but I have put that in to let that saute up. There is some juices on the bottom. See those juices? I'm gonna use those juices and I'm just scraping the bottom, making sure that I don't have any bits of chicken stuck. Okay? Super, super simple. All right, now I'm gonna turn this off because we don't need that bottom element heating up anymore. So we're just gonna press cancel. There we go. And then we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. And this is the ingredients for our sauce. So in the sauce portion of the sweet and sour chicken, we are gonna use pineapple juice. Now what I do is I open a can of pineapple chunks and I reserve the juice right here. If it doesn't measure up to what we need in the recipe, add water, that's totally fine. Or you can use a little can of pineapple juice, but oftentimes I just tip it off with some water. So we're gonna add that. Then I'm gonna add a third of a cup of soy sauce. We're gonna add in a half of a cup of ketchup. A half of a cup of brown sugar. And if you want to use a brown sugar substitute, go ahead, that's fine. And then I'm going to add in some rice wine, some rice wine vinegar, some mirin, it all works. And that's just like a tablespoon of that. Then I'm just gonna stir it up. Now, right now, this sauce is really thin. There's nothing that we've done to thicken it up. Later, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use some cornstarch to thicken up that sauce. But right now, we want it to be a thin liquid because we want it to go under pressure and we need that thin liquid so that it'll come up to pressure. All right, I'm gonna set my pressure cooker for five minutes. I'm getting a tickle in my throat. 
Hi, Amy, how are you doing? Amy is over on YouTube. I love when I get viewers over on YouTube. Okay, you just heard the beeps. The beeps are telling us that the Instant Pot, your electric pressure cooker, has accepted the readings we've put in. We've put in five minutes. So it's reading on, on the front display. And what's happening is that bottom element is heating up. It's going to heat up our thin liquid, which is pineapple juice and soy sauce. As that thin liquid comes to a boil, it will create steam and steam creates pressure. When we have enough pressure, the pressure valve in the back will lift up and it will seal off. At that point, the front panel will change and it will read five minutes. And then those numbers will start counting down in time. When it reaches zero, it will beep, and then we will go from there. This recipe, I believe, is a, nat is a quick release. I didn't check that. Let me go back to the recipe really quick. Sometimes I forget to look at all the details because I make so many recipes. So, yep, we're gonna do a quick release on this recipe. So that'll be fun. So a quick release is when we open up the pressure valve from the back and we let all the steam go quickly and release. At which point, here's the trick. We're gonna add onions and bell peppers because sweet and sour is really good with bell peppers. But bell peppers can get overcooked really, really quickly. So we're gonna open it up. We're gonna throw in cut up bell peppers and onions and we're gonna put the lid back on it and we're gonna cook it again for one minute. Now it'll come to pressure really quickly because it's all so hot in there and it'll cook for one minute and then we'll release the pressure again then we're gonna thicken our sauce. By allowing the bell peppers to only cook for one minute, we're making sure that those bell peppers are cooked, but they're not mushy. Now, if you like really crunchy bell peppers and onions, then you can do for zero minutes. And I know some of you are like, wait, did I say that? Yes. On the older Instant Pots, you can use the plus and minus keys to adjust up or down, but you can adjust down where it'll say zero minutes. The catch is the pressure cooker will pressure up, seal off, then it takes a moment, and then it'll beep saying it started the process, and then it'll beep again saying, oh, you reached zero minutes, and go ahead and reopen and release all the pressure. That is just enough time to cook what's inside. Pretty genius, I think. Okay, I see a lot of comments coming up here. You guys are hilarious. Diane says, hello, please give me the ingredients again. Okay, I'm gonna drop the link in the comments so you can open up a separate tab and you can follow along on the recipe. Inside we have, um, really quickly, we have our chicken that I've sauteed with a little bit of garlic, salt and pepper, and I've used a little bit of butter so that it doesn't stick on the bottom. Then I have added pineapple juice, soy sauce, ketchup, um, rice wine vinegar, and brown sugar into the mix and now we're cooking it under pressure you can get all of those um, ingredient measurements on the recipe itself um, now we're going to push this off to the side so let me just move this out of the way and we're going to work on these vegetables okay so i have a sweet onion and i have some bell peppers and I can hear you at home. I know, you want to watch. So I've already washed the bell peppers. I've already kind of opened them up, but I want to show you, I like my bell peppers for this recipe to be rather large. And so I kind of cut them up like that. See, that's the size I like. That doesn't mean that's the size you like. But we're just going to kind of cut these up. How many of you saw my YouTube video from when I was at Disney World? Have you guys watched that yet? It's kind of fun. 
so many of you sent me messages you did not recognize me because of my hair. Uh, my Florida hair is a bit crazy and wild. It's a lot crazy and wild actually. But you can see how easy this is to cut up these vegetables. And today I'm doing a red bell pepper, a yellow bell pepper, and then a green bell pepper. pretty looks really pretty all right and then I'm going to do the same with a sweet onion this is a rather large onion and again I do like them in kind of big pieces so I'm just kind of wedging it there is no right or wrong way but then I'm just going to separate it out And again, for this recipe, I do like to have the crunch on the vegetables. I like them hot, I like them cooked, but I don't like them soggy. There you go, maybe we need a little more onion. What do you think? Sigrid says, I love the curls. Okay, my hair was so out of control. It was hilarious. There was nothing I could do to solve it. I had my flat iron and I would flat iron it. And then I would walk outside. And within five minutes, it was wild and free and frizzy. So the next time I go, I'm going to use a hair curling product to see if I just can't tame the curls and embrace them. I think that's what I do. Phyllis says, I always add extra onion. I love the extra onion. <laughs> Amy says, if you need a taste tester, let me know. Rebecca, I'm only a few minutes drive away. <laughs> that's hilarious. Love that. Sigrid says, I don't cook along with you. I like to cook dinner early on Sundays so I can relax and watch your demos with a glass of wine. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, well, however you're doing this, whether you're making this along with me or you're watching and you're taking notes so that you can make it later this week, I just love that you're here. Um, and I think it's so fun that we have these live demos because they're just great. So if you've given this video a thumbs up, thank you. If you've given it a heart, big hugs. And if you've shared it, even a bigger hug. Those shares do mean a lot. And if you've made this recipe or other recipes of mine, will you please go back to those recipes and leave a comment and give a star rating. Those star ratings and comments do wonders with Google. And it helps me out and my small business out. And I would love it if each one of you would go back to one of these recipes and leave a positive comment. And if you changed something or added something, put that in the comment too, because others like to read that and it's helpful for them. All right, the other thing that we're gonna add is pineapple. Now the pineapple can be added at the same time as the veggies or it can be added at the very end. I tend to like to add it at the very end after I have thickened the sauce, um, mostly because I like a cooler pineapple. But if you like that hot cooked pineapple, throw it in and it'll get hot and it'll absorb all those yummy juices and flavors from the sweet and sour and it's truly wonderful. After we open it up, we're gonna thicken the sauce with a little bit of cornstarch. You're gonna add a little bit of juice, either from here or a little bit of water um, to thicken up the slurry before we add it into the pot. Now, I'm running low on cornstarch today, so I don't know how thick mine is going to be. Um, but this sauce does thicken up really nicely. It also thickens as it cools, which is another tidbit trick. Okay. 
You guys are fantastic. All right, let's go to full screen. Now we're just waiting. We are already cooking. We are down to four minutes. Remember those numbers cook down in numbers. When it reaches zero, it's going to beep at us and we're gonna open up the pressure valve and let that steam shoot all the way up to the ceiling. As always, remove your pressure cooker away from your cabinets and any overhanging light fixtures because you don't want the steam on it. It gets it yucky and it's a mess. Just trust me here. All right, what other questions do you guys have? We had a quiet group today. I know we have newcomers on here. If you are new, if you are new, this is a safe place to ask questions. This is a place where you can learn how to use your pressure cooker. So get it out of the box and try these recipes right along with me. Um, I post the recipe sometime during the week. It's on my events page. You can see that. Um, Amy from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group, she also posts it into that group as well. So if you're joining me from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group, welcome. I'm Rebecca. I'm happy to have you here. Um, big shout out to Amy and her moderator team. They are fantastic in the way they support me over here on my small channel. So thank you, thank you. All right, I wanna make sure I'm getting all these questions. Deborah, hello. I think I missed your comment earlier. <laughs> Kathy says your hair looks so cute. Kathy said she saw the video from YouTube. Um, Dar, good question. So Dar says, do you ever serve yours um, with rice or noodles? Yes, I typically serve with rice. Um, noodles is also good. So you could make um, just a plain like soba noodle and like butter with garlic is really good. Um, a ramen type noodle, noodle is great as well. Um, my family, we enjoy rice, so I do a lot of rice. You can do brown rice or white rice. It works that way. We just use our rice cooker, kind of fun. Pam says, does it make a lot? There's only two of us and I hate throwing food away. So the good news is, is you can cut the recipe in half, Pam. All right, for two people, use the amount of chicken that you're going to eat. Now I use two large chicken breasts. Today, it's only my husband and I here, so we will definitely have leftovers. The good news is this recipe actually reheats really well um, and it's really good that way. But if you're worried, cut the recipe in half. It will work perfectly. You'll have plenty of sauce, you'll have just enough for two, and you will love it. So just cut it in half. <laughs> Sigrid, you're on it. You're like already figuring it out that you can cut it in half. Hi, Patty. Patty's from Maryland. She's saying, this was my very first recipe that I made in the Instant Pot when I first bought it. It was several years ago, thanks to you, and it turned out great. Hey, Patty, I love that. Thank you. If you will go over to this recipe, go over to the link and leave that as a comment with a star rating for others, that it was your very first recipe. It helps others know that it's not hard. I do these live recipe demos to show you how simple and easy it is so that you'll have the courage to try it at home and give it a shot too, because all of these recipes are really super simple. Okay, did you hear the beep? We're gonna open this up. We're gonna let it do its thing. It's gonna release the pressure and then we're gonna open it up and I'm gonna to toss the vegetables in. Now I'm just gonna to toss them on top and put the lid right back on. I will bring it underneath the top down camera so that you can see what's going on, but it's gonna be quick. So that's why I'm gonna tell you right now because I want to conserve as much of the heat from inside the pressure cooker as possible. So like I said, I'm not gonna add the pineapple because I like it. I like pineapple on the cooler side, but if you like your pineapple hot, throw it in with the vegetables. You can stir it up if you want. I'm not gonna take the time to do it. I'm just gonna dump all of this in and then set it. Hey Susan, how are you? It's okay if you're late. If you're joining me late, the link to the recipe we are making, sweet and sour chicken, is in the comments. I'll add it again. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. 
a heart. And if you're not following me here at Devour Dinner on Facebook or subscribe to me on YouTube, please do so. Please do so. I appreciate it. You get to see all the new recipes that come out, all the updates of recipes that I've been working on. I've been sharing a lot of content from other bloggers. Dinner recipes, appetizer recipes, treat recipes, summer fun recipes, all kinds of recipes. Um, we've been going a little crazy on on the Devour Dinner Facebook page and it is so much fun. We have so many new viewers um, to the page and I love it. So if you're watching and you haven't said hello, hi. I'm Rebecca. I love what I do and I'm happy to be here and I'm glad you're here too. Deborah says, I'm new. I love it. Welcome. Cindy says, just joined. All right, that pressure is probably getting close. So I'm going to start to bring this over. Remember, now we're going to set this for one minute. If you like your vegetables even more on the crunchier side, set your pressure cooker for zero minutes, okay? Because everything is hot inside, it will come to pressure really quickly. Sometimes it pressures right back up by just putting the lid on it because there's so much going on inside. Um, and so sometimes zero minutes isn't enough in this scenario. If you're doing like my sweet and sour meatball recipe where you use frozen meatballs, the zero works phenomenal. It's shocking, I know. Your meatballs are perfectly cooked. It's so great, so great. All right, that pin is about to drop. We're gonna get this top down ready to go. There we go. Okay, now this is probably going to steam this up. So I'm going to try to diffuse it. There we go. Can you see that? There you go. Okay. We're going to drop this in. There we go. See how pretty it is? The colors. I love it. Okay, I've closed the pressure valve in back and I'm gonna go ahead, I press cancel so that I can start the pressure cooking process again. I'm using the plus and minus keys. I'm gonna do mine for zero minutes. Now it'll take a minute and it's going to beep. The beeping is really what tells us that it's accepted the readings right there. So now we know the readings have been accepted and it's going to start heating up that bottom element again. Of course, it won't take very long because all of that liquid is hot and ready. So we'll set that off to the side. I'm gonna clean up some of my mess. We've got a lot of juice going on in there today. A lot of juice, and I do not have enough cornstarch to thicken it up. I might try to pull out some of that juice so that it'll thicken up the sauce that I have in there. I might play a little game today. It might be the only way. So I'm gonna use this that I had the pineapple juice in before. Deborah says she's starting slow, I love that. Christine says, I just made this last week. It was yummy. Um, Dar, yes, you can use flour instead of the cornstarch. Flour, I find, tends to get clumpy if you're not careful. So in this recipe, if you, like where we have all the chicken and the vegetables in there, it's really hard to whisk it if it goes clumpy with the flour. And I find with the cornstarch, it doesn't go clumpy. So that's why I like cornstarch over flour. But yes, you could. So I'm gonna make a little slurry here with a little bit of pineapple juice. 
And you wanna use the least amount of liquid possible when making a slurry. The reason why you wanna use the least amount of possible is because you're adding more liquid to the liquid that's already in here. I'm gonna pull out some of the liquid though from inside. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, I can hear it bubbling in there. So all of that is it's bringing it to a boil. It's heating that liquid, which is cooking those vegetables. And that's why the time under pressure becomes so minor because we don't wanna overcook it. And remember, it takes time to release that pressure as well. While the pressure is releasing, all of those vegetables are still in the hot liquid and are still cooking. That's why even under zero minutes of pressure, those vegetables get cooked pretty well. All right, I'm getting antsy because I'm getting hungry. Sigrid, I, I agree. So Sigrid's comment is the flour usually needs to cook or it can add a weird flour. Um, in this case, there's enough heat and you can turn back on the saute that that flour taste would cook out. Um, I just worry because you've got all of the, the chicken and vegetables in there. You really can't whisk any lumps out if it gets lumpy, um, but it will work. It's kind of one of those personal preferences. I'm glad that helped, Dar. All right, I see more people hopping in. Welcome, welcome. Please give this video a thumbs up. I wanna see those hearts go. There's nothing more satisfying to me to see the hearts like fly across the screen. Um, it's fun. It's so fun. You guys are fantastic. Remember, and if you've shared this on your personal page or into a group, fantastic. It really helps. Okay, next week, I will be live next week. I'm back in town. Um, next week I will be live. We'll do another fun recipe. Maybe we'll do a combo next week with instant pot and air fryer. Haven't used the air fryer in a couple of weeks. So we might do something like that. Um, have you guys been over to my other website, best cookie recipes? Do you know I have another website? Let me drop the link. I'm amazed at how many people, um, don't know that I have two sites. Okay, Dar is asking any recommendations. Is that for the cookie site? All of them. Um, this week I had a churro cookie come out, which is like a, a, this churro cookie is like a really delicious gourmet snickerdoodle type cookie um, with a cinnamon frosting. Oh, it is so good, so good. Um, the other one that came out this week, oh, the Brookie Bars. So it is a, like a fudgy brownie cookie base and then a chocolate chip cookie top and they're cut into bars. So moist, so tender, so good. Two fabulous recipes over there. Oh, Dar, for the air fryer. Lots of great recipes. We use our air fryer. We cook a lot of pork and chicken and steak in our air fryer. So I love the pork tenderloin recipe from my site. Um, and then we'll season it in different ways. So I love the recipe that I have on my site with the marinade. Um, but we'll also do like a brown sugar mustard glaze on the pork tenderloin that is heavenly. Absolutely heavenly. Um, chicken, I do honey mustard chicken. That is on the site and we do big salads because it's hot outside and I don't like to heat up the house. So we'll just cook up a chicken breast. I usually butterfly the chicken breast so it's in half and um, salt and pepper and season it up. And then we cook it in the air fryer and then I just slice it up and put it on a beautiful bed of lettuce. It's wonderful. Okay, I'm talking too much. Did that beep at me? Has it said zero? Nope, it hasn't changed over yet. Sigrid says, I'm not a cookie person, but the brookies sound yummy. They really are. Kathy says, I love my air fryer for potato wedges, also for salmon. Potato wedges would be great in there. I'm allergic to fish, so we don't do any fish here in my house. Um, but it would be excellent. You could use your air fryer for salmon. Dar says, it all sounds so good. 
Has this peeped yet? I don't like my vegetables in there any longer than needs be. You're welcome, Doreen. How are you? Sometimes I talk so fast, I don't even hardly take a breath. So the interesting thing, once it comes to pressure, it still does take a minute before it beeps and it starts its time. We're gonna cut it here in a minute though, so we can let that pressure out because I want those vegetables nice and bright and colorful. So I think we're gonna let it loose. So I'm just gonna unplug it and we're gonna push it off to the side because remember, all of that steam is gonna shoot up again. There we go. So fun. So fun. I know this week here in Eastern Idaho, it's actually gonna be really hot. We're gonna be in the mid 90s and that's really hot for us. So we're finally getting to summer temperatures. Um, it's still been relatively cool. We get down, what are our lows? Bill? What are our lows right now? Can you look? 56? So our lows are 56 degrees, which is really chilly. Um, of course, it's really nice because we can let in all that cool air in the morning and get our house nice and cool. We don't need to run the air conditioner very much at all. Oh, Christine. <laughs> Christine says, I just cannot become friends with my air fryer. Okay, Christine, I wanna know, tell me what the hangup is. Is it too small of a basket? Is it you're not understanding the temperatures and times? Is it you don't know what to cook in it? Is it all of the above? Tell me what you're not loving or, or, or tell me what you've tried. Sigrid says, mine doesn't love me either. <laughs> Laugh the emoji. Oh, you guys are hilarious. Okay, listen, I want to become, I want to get you to love it like I do. So I will use, next week we'll do a combination. We'll do both Instant Pot and Air Fryer. We'll cook something in the Air Fryer. Even if it's like vegetables. I like to roast vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots. Um, I'm working on an Air Fryer zucchini recipe for the website as well. Just because it is so fast and it keeps you from heating up the oven. So I like that. I want to make sure I haven't missed anybody. Sometimes it seems like it takes a long time to release pressure. Do you notice that? Now remember, uh-oh, where did my thing go? I thought we disconnected. Um, remember, when your food is cooking in your pressure cooker, this is the time to clean up your workspace. Load those dishes that you've used into your dishwasher, set your kitchen table, run around and pick up your living room, straighten things up, um, start a load of wash, whatever it is. The reason I love my pressure cooker is because it allows me to be hands-free. I don't have to babysit it, I can walk away. And it gives me time to do other things, which as a mom makes me feel accomplished because there's nothing worse after dinner to have the kitchen be a wreck and all the kids run away like, oh, thanks mom. And nobody's left to help clean up the dishes. So take a few minutes and clean things along the way so that when dinner is done, everybody can help rinse their plates and you can wipe off the kitchen table or the bar if you like to eat at the bar and your kitchen is all put back together and you have a nice relaxing evening. Oh, sometimes this takes so long. It almost kills me sometimes how long it takes. Do you guys feel like it takes a long time? Oh, I need this. All right, make sure your cornstarch slurry, that you keep stirring it. Otherwise it kind of becomes hard. And um, that's the cool thing about cornstarch. Um, I've seen YouTube videos where they actually fill a swimming pool with cornstarch and people walk across it because you can run across it when it sits. It's really weird, really weird. We're almost there. 
Christine, you're going to make me cry. She says, I bought the Instapot because of you and I love it. And you. I could make cheesecake every day. Oh, cheesecake's really good. I like making the mini cheesecakes. I like portion control. Sigrid says, I haven't made cheesecake in a long time. Now I'm craving it. Seriously? It's so good. I like the Easter cheesecakes where you add in like the little candy bars or the M&Ms or the little candy bits. Because it's so fun. Oh yeah, we've got so much liquid that that little amount of cornstarch will never thicken up. So I'm going to pull out a bunch. So I can't remember which one of you asked. If there's only two of us. What can I do? Half the recipe. Sometimes chicken has a lot of liquid in it and sometimes it doesn't have very much. And so you never know how much extra you're going to get. Look, I'm pulling out a cup of liquid. I might regret that. I'll put that one back. The cool thing is, is I can add that right back in if I want. Okay. Let's go top down. Oh, let's try that again. There we go. Can you see that? So I'm going to start right over here in the corner. And I'm just going to pour that in. And then I'm going to stir that. I'm going to turn it to, oh, I don't have it plugged in right now. So you can turn it to saute to get that extra heat underneath it, which does make a difference in how it thickens up. Um, I can already see it thickening up a little bit. So let me grab that cord. Plug this back in and we're just going to put it on saute to heat that bottom to help thicken up the sauce. Now the sauce will thicken as it cools, but of course I want to pour this over some rice and I don't want this sauce running everywhere. So I'd like it to thicken up a little bit. The vegetables, I'm going to pull out an onion. Oh, you know what? I don't know if you can see that. There we go. It's a little hot. I just want to do a quick taste test and I want you to hear the crunch. Could you hear that? Mm. That is a perfect one. I like that. All right, we're going to add in the pineapple. My pineapple's been sitting so it has some more liquid. I don't want the liquid. There we go. Yeah, this needs more cornstarch, definitely. It'll still taste delicious. And we're gonna serve this right over rice. So I have made some rice on the side. And I'm gonna grab that and we're gonna plate this up. How's that? <laughs> Christina says, oh my, they turn out so good, better than in the oven. A cheesecake in the oven is hard to make. I feel like there's a huge learning curve to make cheesecake in the oven. Um, cheesecake in the instant pot, there's also a learning curve as well, especially if you make a full one. Um, the little individual size ones are super simple to make. Um, they're wonderful. All right. I'm going to grab, I'm going to leave that in here. I'm going to grab a plate and I'm going to get some rice and I've got rice sitting just over here. So let me go dish up some rice and then I'm going to serve this up. So hold on. You ready? Hold on.
All right, so I've got rice on my plate. This is coming to a boil. We're gonna spoon some of this up. So take the time, use the cornstarch, thicken this up, because it does, it creates a beautiful sauce that's nice and thick. So when you put it over your rice, it's like a teriyaki bowl or a sweet and sour bowl. It's truly beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful, right? Okay, we're gonna push this off to the side. You see it there okay? All right, the recipe I've already put in there. Oh good, Bill dropped the link for the mini Easter cheesecakes. So that's wonderful. What do you think? Now you can garnish on top with some sesame seeds. You can chop up some green onions to add on top. It adds beautiful color. It's really nice, but let's dive in. The chicken, look at how it just fillets and breaks open. So good. So good. I'm loving it. Mm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So there's a sweet and sour chicken recipe. I hope you'll make it at home. Enjoy it. Love it. Have fun with it. This recipe, I got a viewer who made this for a family reunion. I don't know how many batches they had to make because they have a big family. And they made it for everybody, including the little kids. And they were really worried because, you know, sometimes kids are a little picky. They came back to me and said the kids came back for it again and again and again. They loved it. They scooped the sauce for the rice. They ate the chicken, they ate the pineapple, some enjoyed the, the bell peppers, but it was a success for their family reunion. And let me tell you, it tickled my heart to even hear that, that they made such a big batch of this to enjoy with all of their family. It's a great recipe, I hope you'll try it too. Please make sure to go and leave a comment on the recipe, whether it's this one or the cheesecake recipe or whatever recipe it is. Let me know that you've made it, give it a star rating, it so helps. If you're watching this on the replay, leave your comments. Um, I'll circle back around and I'll answer those when I come back around. We are live both on Facebook and on YouTube, but if you're watching on the replay, say hello. I love to see who's watching these and get to know you better. All right, that's all I've got. I'm gonna eat dinner because I'm hungry. You guys have a fabulous Sunday. I'll be back next week and we'll make something fantastic. We'll see you later. Bye.